Another pathogen that we find in this stand, even though the predominant uh, damage has been mountain pine beetle, there is a lot of dwarf mistletoe, and we have not covered mistletoes yet. That's coming up in about two weeks, but the dwarf mistletoes are in the genus Archuthobium, and they're parasitic plants. So they're not a disease in and of themselves, but they can lead to stress-related problems for trees. And what we see is the mistletoe penetrates directly into the stem of the tree where it extracts water, mineral nutrients, and carbohydrates. That makes it what we call a full or obligate parasite. In other words, it cannot survive unless it is attached to a host. Each branch that is infected by mistletoe will show reduced growth and the photosynthates that are produced by this limb, some of them will be intercepted by the mistletoe and thus not be used to fulfill life functions within the tree. Most mistletoes never kill trees directly. However, very heavy infection of mistletoe may have predisposed some of the trees in this stand to mortality by bark beetles. We see that commonly in Douglas fir as well. Another thing this tree demonstrates is a central stem infection. And central stem infections can be uh, more problematic if they are heavy than limb infections. As far as management of mistletoes, we're going to look at some management techniques, but it is worthy of note that if we remove the branch that has the mistletoe, the mistletoe dies and the tree will recover and outgrow those effects. Now, as we said, this stand here has an abundance of this mistletoe and it may have predisposed these trees. One of the interesting things about the mistletoes is they are very species specific. So in an area that, such as this with lodgepole pine, if there were an opportunity to grow other species such as true firs or ponderosa pine, we would not have to worry about those becoming infected by the mistletoe.